Now you might have seen us review uh, Abarth 595 and I-20 N-Line in the past few videos and those are lukewarm hatchbacks. Maybe the Abarth is a little bit more on the hotter side but this is at the beginning of the hot hatch segment internationally. This is a Polo GTI and there's levels to this shit because this is probably one of the nicest beginning hatchbacks you can buy in the world and this is a 1.8 TSI so if you want the full potential this is the optimum package for it and since this is the driver's up this is a stage 3 car welcome back to the driver's up this is auto culture Now, before we jump into all of the juicy stuff which is underneath this hood, I quickly want to talk about the looks and the differences between a normal GT TSI and a proper Polo GTI. Well, first off is the headlights and uh, the grille section which is specific to the GTI with these red accents all along and them extending into the headlight. The bumper is also unique when it came out but later on Volkswagen decided to give this bumper to the normal Polos as well. Coming down to the side, you have the GTI uh, badging over here. Now this is on some really nice looking N-key wheels with uh, Michelin PS4 rubber but stock the wheels are different. You get 16 inches with the 5 spoke design. Coming down to the back, you will see that this is a 3 door hatch. 3 door counting 1, 2 and 3 at the back. And this looks very very sexy in my opinion because a 2 door hatch is something that you do not get to see in India and we are lucky that in this Hyderabad trip we got to do 2 which is the 595 and this GTI. And since it's a two-door, the glass over here in the back is extended so that the rear passengers, if you have any, can get a lot of uh, sunlight inside. These tail lights are also now available with, used to be available with the latest generation of Polo, but now that has been discontinued. So was the bumper and you have a twin tip uh, muffler at the back and the GTI badging as well. A pretty standard looking Polo GTI and if you don't know what you're looking at, this will go under the radar. Now if I wanted to sell my Lora and get something else, I mean of course an Octi 1.8 would be a great choice but this would be my optimum choice because it's so short, compact and agile. This is the perfect package for a 1.8 TSI build and this thing produces 330 horsepower and 420 newton meters of torque. The turbo that this thing is running is an IS20 turbo stock. It comes with an IS12 turbo. So a pretty big difference with the IS20 which is the stock turbo on a VRS. Uh, the intake is a racing line performance intake and it sounds insane while you're driving. The coil pack is from a VRS 230. You get NGK Iridium spark plugs. But I think so the most amazing mod on this thing is that the full system turbo back exhaust is from Miltec and as much as we love to have our own custom made exhaust a proper engineered Miltec exhaust system is always going to be much more refined much better sounding and will kind of garner more performance also at least reliably and of course you have an intercooler also for the heat management of the engine and it's an air tech intercooler so that the engine is nice and cool and doesn't overheat from time to time Oh yes! Now, I know you guys are itching to see this thing on the road. So am I because I'm really excited to drive this car. So, but before that, let's just quickly run over the interior because I love this interior. It doesn't get more minimalistic and the functionality of the interior is just amazing. First of all, the doors are super long. It's very unlike a normal Polo that you can get in India. Second of all, you have a proper OEM GTI steering wheel and there's something really nice about a GTI steering wheel. I know a lot of Polo owners love to do GTI steering swaps and well, yep, it's something really special. Flat bottom, all of the controls over here and paddle shifters. Now, the instrument cluster is a little bit different compared to a normal Polo that you could get in India. Uh, the dials are a little bit bigger and you have these silver outlines on both the tachometer and the speedometer and you have a central digital instrument cluster. But the best part about the interior, apart from the steering, has to be these amazing seats. First of all, it has this characteristic GTI design on it, which you only get in Polo GTIs and Golf GTIs. And the bolstering and the way this seat hugs you is just amazing. It is really helpful in the corners. But I think so, I need to stop blabbering, start this thing up and just take it out for a quick spin.
It's lights out and away we go. Sainz gets away well, as does Lando Norris, as does Lewis Hamilton, who's already ahead. George Russell out of this race. And the red flag has now come out to make racing redundant. Hungry during those long red flags in F1? Well, we've gotten just the solution for you. Download the Domino's app using the link in our bio or tap the link in our story. Once the app is downloaded, order worth 400 rupees and use our coupon code FEAST1336 and avail a 30% discount up to 200 rupees off. Get freshly made pizza at your doorstep in 30 minutes. I've taken this car out for a round before this and the amount of laughter and just the big white smile that it still is giving me is just insane. First of all, this thing is one way, okay? I don't think so. This is dumb fast. For a car this size, this is dumb fast. This should not be allowed. Oh, I can't hold the camera still, bro. <laughs> oh my god. I think so. This is the most lively 1.8 TSI build I've ever driven. It is so communicative. Now, I know I love to drive manuals, but somehow a DSG works really well with this engine as well. It is wild the way this thing just picks up the power and just shoots you off. And first of all, it's so powerful that it's spinning its wheels in third as well. It's nuts, absolutely nuts. And the best part about it is it does not fall short in the corners as well, because I know that a lot of people like to say that Volkswagens aren't really that communicative in the corners. It's still the case with this car, but the amount of grip and just the way this thing holds the road when you're chucking it through a corner is just wild. And that's mainly down to the sticky PS4 rubber and the IBAC street spec coilovers which are adjustable. I have to do one more pull, I'm sorry. Get into his boost reins. Oh my god! I have never felt this type of brutal acceleration in a car this small. Now, I have driven cars which have much more power than this, but somehow this feels just wildly faster than anything else. And that's probably down to the fact that this is much lighter than anything else. 330 horsepower and probably a car that weighs like 1.1, 1.2 tons, which is not a lot of weight to lug around when you have 330 horsepower. Honestly, I know manuals are great and all, but a DSG, I, I'm starting to miss some DSG farts and some, and that rapid acceleration and the rapid shifts of a DSG. And the Miltec exhaust system is absolute money. speechless that's how fun this car is it just shoots you off into the distance i don't think i've had this much amount of fun in a car in a very long time the 600 bhp vrs was just something that just boggled your mind you couldn't really 
enjoy the speed because it was so unnerving to drive this is bloody quick it is very quick but it somehow still lets you have that fun without feeling that scared now some things i was discussing with the owner is that uh, it's still running a dq200 gearbox which is kind of not the best gearbox for this car because as we all know the dry clutch dq200 is prone to a lot of mechatronics failures clutch failures and all of that and 250 newton meters of torque is kind of the limit of the dq200 i am not sure how this gearbox is holding on to all of this power but the owner is actively searching for a dq250 replacement is what i think and that is something that is needed for a build which is so powerful and so aggressive basically so a dq250 uh, swap is a much needed modification that you should do to your polo gti if you're planning to take it to stage 3 if you want to start pushing power and more importantly start pushing power more reliably get a dq250 that's a mod that you will not regret Now Polo GTIs aren't the easiest cars to come across because of their super limited numbers and apparently only 99 units have been sold in India. Considering a couple have been crashed, the number goes even lower. And well, finding one is one thing, but buying one means basically you're paying 15 to 20 lakhs for a Polo because the GTIs can hold their value. That's why most people looking to get one end up buying the more practical powerful and well equipped Octavia VRS in the used car market but if you find a good deal or have some extra money to splurge on a project car the GTI is one hell of a shout